Defence lawyers in the Senzo Miwa murder trial continued to cross-examine the state's first witness, Zandile Kumalo. On Friday, Kumalo denied reports uh, that there was an altercation between her and her then-boyfriend, Longo Tala, resulting in the gunning down of the Kfoma Bafana Bafana captain. The defence said a witness would be called to testify that Miwa's friend, Tumelo Madlala, said a bullet hit Miwa while he was trying to intervene in a fight between Kumalo and Twala. Miwa was shot dead at the parental home of his singer girlfriend Kelly Kumalos in Phosphorus, east of Johannesburg, in 2014. Let's stay with the story and speak to Criselda Lewis, a CBC News senior reporter who's been following this particular case. Criselda, before we even get to developments around Kelly Kumalo, the day ending off with some accusations of fabrication around the identity of the suspect that Zandi claims to have fought with, as well as well as you know some of what he may have looked like. Let's talk about what else appears to have been the bone of contention for the defence. The uh, defence basically insisting that uh, there were no intruders uh, inside the Kumalo home on the day that Senzo Miwa was shot dead. And they basically say that uh, one of the individuals uh, that was inside uh, the house had basically pulled the trigger. This is something that the current witness on the stand, uh, Zandi Kumalo, uh, disputes. Let's take a listen to part of what was said. I will put it to that, as I would have mentioned or put to you earlier, that you and other witnesses, this is your mother and Tosis Twali, had this tendency of pointing out an innocent person within the, in order to avoid a suggestion which I'm going to make to you that the deceased was killed by person who was in the house and there was no robber in there and we did not look at it himself. Eh, <laughs> is that uh, people, they were intruders, <coughs> they, they showed Senzo, uh, uh, I'm not pretending on that. That I was placed on record, but I don't say the kind of thing that was placed on record. It must have been on record. So, you have to know, it was very, very, I don't say the kind of thing. I'm trying my best to represent my client, to assist the court, but when you start to answer like that, I don't say the kind of thing. I am taking that in which you are uh, putting to me. I am responding to the manner in which you are responding now, in which uh, you will speak to me. If you raise your voice or your tone, I'm not going to raise mine. If you lower it, I'm going to respond. I'm going to lower it. If you respect me like a witness, I'm also going to be the same. So, who are any other things which you decide to come by the it's up to you which you decide to take. I'm just on the phone. Well, basically, Bongi, there had also been a heated exchange uh, inside uh, the courtroom. 
And this is uh, when uh, the uh, defense basically tried to point out uh, to uh, several uh, contradictory statements that uh, Zandi uh, Kumalo had to post uh, to police in between uh, 2014 and uh, 2018. And essentially, uh, you know, what uh, the uh, defense uh, is uh, insisting is that they're basically trying to say that uh, Zandi Kumalo is uh, lying on the stand and that some of uh, the statements that she made to police, she didn't, for example, give explicit, um, uh, you know, um, uh, descriptions, for example, of um, uh, the facial uh, uh, details of some of the accused that uh, were inside the house, they say, on the day that Senzo Meiwa was uh, killed. And also, we saw advocate uh, Zandilem Shololo, who was next uh, to cross-examine, also stating that the crime scene had been tampered with, that in fact uh, several uh, neighbours had given statements uh, indicating that uh, the house had been cleaned. A certain neighbour uh, by the name of uh, Mapiri, according to one of uh, the statements that was supposed by the neighbours, saying that Mapiri had been uh, cleaning up uh, the uh, crime scene. And this was before police had actually arrived. And uh, Advocate Zandi Lemsholola also asking for uh, details pertaining to what some of the suspects had been wearing, these alleged intruders that had come inside the house. And uh, Advocate Zandi Lemsholola basically uh, asking uh, what color the hoodie was of one of uh, the intruders that Zandi uh, Kumalo says had entered the house. There'd been a bit of an exchange there with the defense basically saying that she's fabricating a story and lying to this court. Let's take a listen. And the reason why you are failing to give a full description of the hurt of the second suspect, including the color of the hood that the second suspect was wearing, is because there was no second suspect. You are fabricating the story. That's what you are saying, advocate him sure, and not I'm, me. And I'm convoluting as well and so I can answer for the game and do. And I don't think I would come where from wherever I'm coming from just to come and get bored here in court. And lie to the court. All right, so Advocate uh, Zadi Lemchoro will continue, say, cross-examination of uh, witness uh, Zandi Kumalo tomorrow. All right, uh, that's uh, Chris Alda Lewis there bringing us uh, the very latest uh, from the Senzo Meiwa murder trial. And, uh, of course, she's back there tomorrow and we'll continue to bring updates throughout the course of the week.